Hello. Uh, so we're still talking about multivariate regression and, and controls, the idea of controlling for a variable. Uh, now, the last time we talked a lot about what controls actually do, and what they really do is they take the variation uh, in, two, in the relationship between two variables, we have a treatment variable, we have an outcome variable, and they're related for different reasons. And the thing that a control does is it removes some of the reasons, leaving us, ideally, with just the reasons that matter. Uh, now, uh, this can be a tricky thing to do. Like, how do we know what variables we need to control for in order to just leave the reasons that we're interested in? If we're interested in the effect of the treatment variable on the outcome variable, there's lots of reasons why those two variables could be related to each other, especially in social science. In social science, which econ economics is a social science, there's usually many, 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 many reasons why two variables might be related to each other. Now, given that, how can we know what we need to control for in order to get rid of all of the alternate explanations for the relationship between two variables so that after we've controlled for all of those things, we know that the only reason why we might still see a relationship between those two variables is because they're actually causing each other, right? That's the idea here. That's the goal here. We want to control for enough things that when we see that there's still an effect of the treatment variable on the outcome variable, we cannot just say, oh, those two variables are related to each other statistically. We can say that one of those variables causes the other causally. So how can we figure out what that list of variables needs to be to add as controls so that we can get to that point of getting a causal inference so that we don't make an identification error? Well, one tool that can really help us out there is something called causal diagrams. Now, what a causal diagram is, is it's a very simple representation of the data generating process. A data generating process is the process that generates the data, which isn't a particularly helpful explanation. But the idea is we see data. We see certain values of the treatment. Some people get treated, some people get don't, some people get treated more, some people get treated less. We see the outcome. Some people have high outcomes, some people have low outcomes, some people have medium outcomes. And we see values of the control variables. Some people have high values of the control variables, some people have low values of the control variables. But what is it that actually leads us to see particular values for a particular person? What is the data generating process that created that data in the first place? And the components of that data generating process are things like causal relationships, right? If I tell you that uh, variable A causes variable B, then if I see a particular value, a high value of variable B and a high value of variable A, I can say, well, the data generating process that got us there is that A causes B. The reason why I see them both being high at the same time is because one causes the other, right? That would be an example of a data generating process. Now, there are lots of data generating processes and they can get quite complex, especially in, again, social science where everything causes everything else. The world is complex. It makes our job hard. Okay, so we're going to represent this data generating process in a diagram. And all this diagram is gonna do is it's gonna take all the variables that are relevant to our situation, and it's gonna say, hey, of all these variables, which of them cause each other? And then I'm gonna draw an arrow from all the things that cause to all the things that are caused. And that will give me a causal diagram. And in a minute, I'm gonna tell you how you can use that causal diagram once we've drawn it, to figure out what variables you need to control for to identify the effect you're looking for. So in the last video, we used an example about shorts wearing and eating ice cream. We notice in the data that people tend to wear a lot of shorts on the same days that they eat a lot of ice cream. Uh, now we know because we know about the world that this is probably not because wearing shorts causes you to eat ice cream, but rather because on hot days, you tend to do both of those things right? Temperature is the variable here. So let's think about the data generating process, okay? Maybe wearing shorts causes you to eat ice cream. I don't think it does, but let's say that maybe there's a possibility that's there. So let's say we're going to allow for the possibility that shorts wearing causes ice cream eating. Okay, that's going to be part of our data generating process. But more likely, the temperature is going to cause both shorts wearing. If it's a hot day, you're going to wear shorts and it's gonna cause ice cream eating. If it's a hot day, you might eat ice cream. So I'm gonna represent that on a causal diagram. I'm just gonna put on the diagram 
shorts wearing, ice cream eating, the temperature. And I'm going to say, shorts wearing might cause ice cream eating. That's the, that's the arrow that I'm interested in. I want to know if shorts wearing causes ice cream eating. But temperature certainly causes both of them. And that's it. That is the causal diagram. I just take the variables that are relevant, and I say which variables cause each other, and I draw arrows from one to the other, and then it's it. That's done. That's it. That's the causal diagram. So now I've drawn this causal diagram, and I want to make sure, you know, all the relevant variables are there, and all the arrows that I need to be are there are there, so that I have a good representation of what's sort of going on under the scenes. What is it that gave us the data that, that we see? Right? What is the engine driving the observations that we see? Once we have this, how can we use this to get our causal effect of interest? Well, conveniently, there's a mathematical logic to these causal diagrams that's going to tell us exactly which variables we need to control for. The first step that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to walk along the diagram. And once we've done that, we need, we're, we're going to know which paths we need to close off and block so that the only way we can walk along the diagram is from the treatment to the outcome. That's the goal. If I'm interested in knowing, does the treatment cause the outcome? And I'm worried that there are alternate explanations. For example, that it being a hot day causes us to wear shorts and eat ice cream. Then I need to make sure that I can't possibly walk along the path that contains temperature because that is an alternate explanation. That's an explanation that I am not interested in, so I need to close it and ignore it. And if I can do that, then I can be sure that if I'm walking there at all, I must be walking along the path that I'm interested in. So how can we draw these paths and close these paths? So in this example here, if I want to walk from shorts wearing to ice cream eating, there's only two ways that I can go. I can either walk directly from shorts wearing to ice cream eating, that's the path I'm interested in, or I can walk a path from shorts wearing to temperature and back to ice cream eating. That's the alternate path I want to close. I can close the path by controlling for a variable along the path. That's what one thing that adding a control does. It closes the paths that it's on. So if I want to say I only care about the shorts wearing the ice cream eating, I don't care about the one that goes through temperature, I can control for temperature, it gets rid of that endogeneity problem, the only path left is shorts wearing the ice cream eating, and so if I still see a relationship, it, it probably means that shorts wearing causes ice cream eating. If I don't see a relationship, that means that it doesn't. Let's take another quick example. What's the effect of preschool on your adult earnings? Now I've drawn a very simplified causal diagram here. Of course, there are many, many other things that we could put on, but let's imagine for a second that this is the true diagram. Uh, preschool causes your, you raise your earnings at, as an adult. Uh, the location that you grew up in might affect the pre, whether you go to preschool or not, and also your earnings. Uh, your preschool could affect the skills that you get, uh, which could affect your earnings. Maybe it makes you more skilled because you're a better reader or something like that. And of course, your background, things like race and socioeconomic status and all that sort of stuff is going to affect your preschool and your skills and your earnings. Okay, so we have a lot of paths that we could walk here. So if we're interested in the effect of preschool on earnings, I can think, well, okay, what paths count as part of the effect that I'm trying to pick up and what paths don't? So I would say, well, okay, preschool to earnings, that's a path that counts. If preschool directly affects your earnings in some way, I want to know about it. Preschool to skills to, to earnings would also count. If I think that preschool might make you earn more because it improves your skills, that's a valid, to me, reason why preschool would cause your earnings to go up. So I'm going to count that as well. Everything else I don't think counts. And there are a number of other paths that we could walk. So for example, we could go preschool to background to earnings. Don't want that. I could go preschool to skills to background to earnings. Don't want that either. Preschool to background to skills to earnings. Don't want that either. I could go preschool to location to earnings. I don't want that either. So there are a number of paths that I could walk, and each of these paths represents an alternate explanation of why preschool and earnings might be related. If we look in data, we might see that people who go to preschool earn more. Why? Well, one reason might be because it improves their skills. Another reason might be that it just so happens that if you live in certain areas, you're more likely to go to preschool and more likely to earn more money. Uh, and that, that's an explanation we don't want. It's an alternate explanation. We can close it down by controlling for location, right? If we control for location, it closes down the path. Preschool, location, earnings, gone. 
If we control for background, it closes down every single path that it's on. So it closes down preschool background earnings. It closes down preschool background skills earnings. It closes down preschool skills background earnings. Those are all closed. So if we control for background and location, all that's left are preschool to earnings and preschool to skills to earnings. So if after controlling for these variables, we still see a relationship, then that is the causal effect of preschool. And that's why a causal diagram can help us figure out what variables we need to control for. Because it can tell us, if you control for this set of variables, whatever is left over has to be a causal effect. And that's what we're looking for, a causal effect. And we need to know what variables we need to control for. The diagram can tell us that. Now, of course, this assumes that we can draw the diagram accurately. Uh, which is, of course, a difficult thing. It also assumes that we can actually measure and control for these things. Background, that's a very vague variable. How do we control for background? We could add a control for race. We could add a control for your parents' socioeconomic status. We could add a control for all sorts of things. But are we really ever controlling for background? So the lesson that we might get from this causal diagram might be, hey, if you want to get this effect, you got to control for background. But you can't do that, so maybe we can't get the causal effect in the way that you want. So what a causal diagram tells us is very important. It can either tell us, here's what you got to control for, or it can tell us, eh, you got to control for something that you can't control for, in which case we might got to do something else other than just controlling for stuff. All right, that's it. Thank you.